I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, not so much about how to do things this morning, but a way of doing things. In other words, a sort of a pathway in terms of going through the art world and going through and the pathway of creativity. And if you, um, if you will, I like to say that I like to walk the talk in the sense of living in a way that is creative through and through, in and out and around. And what I mean by that is basically I try to surround myself with beautiful things, beautiful people, and experiences that, that mean something to me. I don't particularly, I mean, I, I love the idea of whatever comes along, even if it's a tornado. It's, a, it's something that is, sometimes it's exciting, as we had the other day. So what I'm going to do is um, talk a little bit about, I'm going to sit down if I may, right here and make myself a little closer to you. Isn't, isn't this better? feels better than with a podium and a big microphone and, and a much more intimate audience. So uh, in order to get to this particular point in life, I have to say that it didn't, it did, I wasn't born that way. I wasn't a, born with a sense of, um, of things that kind of came along and, and I worked with. And yet there is always a sense of awareness Awareness is a very important thing, and I, I think that's really what it boils down to now, especially a sense of awareness of seeing different things and becoming a part of them, not separating myself from things. So I, in order to do this kind of or live this kind of way, I had to, I had to pay the price. I didn't have the, uh, the ability to do a lot at first because I, first of all, didn't have the resources. I was in a, in a situation living for 14 years without running water in my life in order to build a structure like this. So and that, was, and that was something that I, I, I saved. I, I did it intentionally. I could have lived in an apartment and had running water and lived like most people, but I decided to try to save my pennies so that I could build my own home the way I wanted to do it rather than to try to rent something or buy something that was somebody else's style, somebody else's way. So in doing so, I found in the 14 years I did research and I wanted to do as much of an, have as little environmental impact as possible because I believe very much in having a, a green world and a world that gets along together. So with that in mind, I put things together. I found materials and I built this home. I had help. I didn't do everything. I don't, I don't do any electrical work. I could, I can't handle electricity. Uh, it scares me. But I can, I can swing a hammer and put, put stones together and things like that. So I built this home and it took, oh, I left the, uh, can, I, can I use this thing to make, make it go forward? Yes, good, okay. So uh, this is the front door, and, and uh, there's little things that, yeah, that's a millstone leaning up against the, the post there. And because I live on Millstone Road, mm -hmm. actually off Millstone Road, and I named the road myself, and it's called Litho Path, L-I-T-H-O-P-A-T-H. Say that three times fast, and you're pretty good. <laughs> so I live on Litho Path, and it's back in the woods. I don't see another house. I do have neighbors that I get along with, and uh, it's an enjoyable, serene setting. And that little pole that's standing up there, I made up at Haystack Mountain. I fashioned it in a forge by bending it with a red hot, and then I put it into a spruce log and made that thing. So I should have brought that with me in case um, it's, it's a hook. So usually someone off stage uses it to pull the person <laughs> if they talk too much. So uh, that's what that's for. And uh, there's things that I find, pieces of wood, mountain laurel. This is a door handle. When, I, when the door was uh, made, and uh, the, I, I put that handle on rather than having a, a normal, nothing is really normal in the way I like to do things. I like to do the, the, the most different kind of thing possible. 
This is a, uh, a grate that you use, uh, that the old time houses used to have when they had heating units from the bottom and furnaces that the hair, well, but this happened to belong, somebody came over with this under their arm, can you use this? I said, I looked at it and I said, hmm, I don't know. And, um, and, he, and I looked at it more and more and I said, I'll figure out something for it. I'll figure it out. I'll discover something that I could use it for. And which I did, and I use it as a floor grate, and I can scrape the mud off my shoes when I come enter the house. But it happened to have a little history to it. That floor grate happened to be in the home of a guy by the name of Will Rogers. Oh, wow. So, um, it, you know, and, and Will Rogers, if those of you that may know the name, said, there's not a man I didn't like. There's not a person I never liked. He, you know, he, he liked, some, he, he found something good in everybody. And that's coming into the house. So, and that's the doorway going in. And as you can see, if you notice, there's a post coming down. Well, that doesn't look like that anymore now. It's, it's got a change to it. It has, has a different kind of sense about it because it's been sculpted. That's the inside of the house. The, uh, the stairway, as you can see, has this landing and then it goes upwards. And well, if you, if you look at the front of the stairway, that's a blackboard that came from, they don't use blackboards anymore. They use whiteboards or something that, uh, so, uh, and computers. So they don't need those things. And of course, when schools throw things out or anybody throws things out, I am there to say, what can I do with this? So I've, I not only used it as that, frontal piece, I used it for my countertops in my kitchen. Uh, the, the, uh, that arched piece of wood, is, that's a piece of cherry that um, I went down into the woods to find with my friend Brian Garner and uh, he got poison ivy when we got it and uh, basically took it to the mill and shaped it like, well, it was shaped like that, but it didn't have a front and a back. Well, that lifts and lay, raises and lowers so that I can bring my paintings up and down the stairs. So things are practical that way. The railings up there are from piano legs, upright piano legs. So all those, those um, well, balusters, I guess they're called, right? Looking towards the kitchen, uh, you can see there's a, a, a floor. I don't know if you can see the pattern on the floor, but that floor has many, 200 different artists that came and honored me by doing a little painting on a tile this big. So I sort of surrounded myself with my friends and they're all part of this. And they all came over except for two people who had a difficult uh, problems physically. Uh, one of them happens to be the one that looks like a grid work. Uh, that's you see down there in the sort of lower right. Uh, that was uh, Chuck Close who painted that tile for me. And another one was Carol Hunt. And uh, so uh, everybody uh, sort of honored me with that little gift. The kitchen countertop was made, I made that myself from recycled black walnut and mahogany just like the black walnut, the, the tree that fell outside here it was all cut up. So um, I like to cook. Cooking is very much like printmaking. Not that I'm a great cook, but I like it. One of my pride and joys is discovery of this, uh, this lighting fixture that is, and this is where I incorporated, I'm not a, a great fan of math, but I am a great fan of numbers. And so this is a number three. If you look at this, there's three tiers, three chains that go up to the top and actually 15 globes, hand-blown glass globes. And inside the, and those uh, 15, there's three styles and there's six, six, and three in terms of the tiers. And by the way, it is not electrified. It's all candle lit. So, I have to raise and lower. I go up on, the, up, up on the second level, and if you remember the old Frankenstein movie where Igor goes up and he opens up the thing with the chain, well, it's well, 
Yeah, and so I enjoy doing that. And usually I put on some piece of music uh, that goes along with it, something like either either a, a Bach Toccata in Fugue or a, a Rachmaninoff, something with a little bit of much more than this morning's music. I mean, that would have been a little bit much for... This is a ladder that goes nowhere or it goes everywhere, whichever way you want to look at it. But it was a 77 year old ladder made out of one piece of wood that was cut down the middle and then the rungs were put in there. So uh, it was used in an apple orchard. It's 20, 22 feet high, sort of gives, me, it gives you a sense of the space of the room that it's in. Way up in the top corner, you see that round thing? You know what that is? Wasp. What? Wasp nest. A wasp's nest. Yes, it's a paper wasp nest. You knew that. <laughs> it's a paper wasp nest. I mean, how many people have that in their living rooms? You know, or, or a tractor Ford grill. Yeah, hmm? right. What's it? As long as it's uninhabited. It's uninhabited. <laughs> is right. Yeah. That on the top corner is uh, that round thing. Those are all shovel handles from shovels. You know, you just cut the hand. Well, the handles were, were part of a shovel, and the shovels, you'll see a little later on what I'm doing there. Right below that is a, is a drawing that's framed up that came from Willem de Kooning, who gave it to me. You could stop or go or slow down. Okay, that's, that on, that's the post now, and that's what it looks like. So rather than having that square angular piece, this is now replacing it. It was hand carved by my friend from Peru who came up and she carved it. She spent about three weeks carving and sanding it and making a human heart. Not a pineapple, not an acorn like one would traditionally use in, in a normal house. So this has got that other kind of sensibility to it. So this is far more interesting, I think, in terms of a, 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 a presentation for people to see how uh, things fit in and a way of living as opposed to what things do, right? And how to do them. This is a new stairway that I, built, I just built up a stone wall to get to my gong. Sound is very important to me. Music is the, in my opinion, the highest art form it can rise a little bit more of the emotional aspect within us than most other of the art, other arts. Not that I want to downplay any of them, but I just feel personally more about music. If you felt it this morning a little bit, great. That's, never had that before in terms of a talk to have a piece of music as, a, as an introduction. This is a fun thing to look at because um, most people, look, I bring people into my bathroom and I said, I say, this is, uh, this is my bathroom and this is probably the most unusual thing that you'll ever see in anybody's home anywhere in the world. Because you, in fact, you can't ever see this in anybody else's home. There's only one in existence. So does anybody know what it is? Uh, you know what it is, you, you're, you know, you know everything because you've been there. You wouldn't see it normally because it's, it's usually inside the body. It's a, it's a hip bone, all right? And that's why you wouldn't see it normally because you'd have to do surgery and it, it's actually a cut right here. And then they take the hip bone, that part of the hip bone, and they cut it off. And, and, I, and I have to, of course, ask for it and say, can I have my hip bone back? And so, and they say, what for? I say, because I need a doorknob. So that is a, that's a, a hip bone from, I had it done in New Zealand. Simple door opening device called a door latch that had 17, 17 year old girls that could not open it up and they were trying to figure it out when they were leaving my home and they were all Googling on their phones how to open up a door and they couldn't open up the door and they simply just push down the latch and it lifts it up and it opens. But if you're not used to those things or you have never seen them before, like dial phones and uh, old style things, you know, how do you know, right? That's where I hang my roadkill. 
Uh, this is the new building that was just put up about uh, a couple of years ago, and this is basically a, a gallery space and a room up above it called the Barefoot Room, where we do meditation and yoga and Tai Chi Chi Gong and uh, sometimes gong ceremonies and all crystal healing, all kinds of woo-woo stuff, you know, I like that kind of thing. So this is the shovels, that, these are the shovels that I was talking about that I'm building. I'm building this sort of memorial and it has the names of all the, not everybody yet that I've known, but dead artists. Uh, so it's a sort of a dead artist society and all the names of some of the people that I've worked with or taught with or taught under or were my students uh, that are no longer around. And on top, you can't really tell, but there's a propeller. And that propeller turns in the wind. And my interpretation of this is that the spirits of all these dead friends and people I've known are being blown back into, back to us again, hmm? you know, whatever that means. This is the gallery space, a couple of works. Um, if you can see the two pieces that are black and white pieces, those are solar plate prints, and so the, is the one on the back wall. They're about four feet They're big. I made them in China. That's upstairs in the barefoot room. And uh, you can see the rounded posts that are coming down, they're rounded. And there are four of them, and they represent the four elements of earth, fire, air, and water. And my friend from Peru, she carved the four elements there. So the sunlight beams in beautifully when it's shining. And this is a stairway that I built because I had um, I was criticized with my floor plans, and I showed uh, a, a friend or, or a, a feng shui person my floor plan. He said, ah, your staircase is no good. You got to change it. You got to change it. It's boring and everything. I, he said, do something with it. So I did. And then I created a stairway that would be beautiful so that every time anyone walked up that stairway, they would feel something. It wouldn't just plop up a flight of stairs and go someplace. They would sense something. So that's what it's about. It's a, it's a way, it's a pathway that can, be, can lead us somewhere. On the top of each, on the top of each post is a, a, a soapstone uh, top which um, is called something I forgot. But anyway, that top is leftover pieces from my soapstone stove in the house. Oh, there's that, one. how did I get there? Is that out of order? That's my bathtub that's made out of copper that I just, I'm gonna use that, uh, I'd like to use that sort of like a, a coffin because it's uh, made out of copper. Copper is a beautiful printmaking element that um, most people uh, no, but um, and uh, I actually don't plan on staying in that coffin after that day. Is I plan on uh, having my ashes uh, put into graphic chemical and ink bone black, and put into everybody's work that uses that ink. So uh, it's sort of a cool thing to be able to think of yourself going out there and being part of so much creativity, you know, that's sort of a silly, silly thing, but it's a way, it's a pathway, huh? That is, is different than what? So you don't hear about these kinds of ideas and thoughts when you see artist pictures, right? Well, these are what shovels look like. In case you have any old shovels kicking around, I can use some more, so just let me know and uh, I'll, and I, I have, they have to be names, I, I put the names of people on, on them that I knew, not just any old name. I can't put Picasso on there or Jackson Pollock because I didn't really know them in person. But this is how the idea occurred because I had this collection going and I looked at them one day and I said, gee, those shovels look like tombstones. They look just like tombstones. And I said, so I'm going to make them intentional to look more like, and that's how that took place. And that's, that was the beginning of it. 
Uh, that's my little gypsy caravan. It's a fun thing that I, I go into to take a sauna. It's a little um, it's a wood fired sauna. And that's uh, up in my bedroom with a glass floor that you can stand on and look down on the floor below. A little rug in front that I made in New Zealand. And that's a log is from a beaver. I sort of helped the beaver out by taking the log and yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's looking up from the bottom to where we were just standing. And that's lo actually looking up into a closet. I kind of like that idea of looking up into a closet rather than, at, I mean, you look in a closet, you see clothing this way and shoes on the floor usually and junk up on top and everything like that and things throw. But this is uh, my closet looking up. It's sort of very suggestive in a way of a lot of things. huh? <laughs> Very abstract images. So there's a, a log that I found, and it's actually a locust log that uh, I cut and made into a, a chopping block so that when I have roadkill, I can use it. And this is something that I also found in the woods. It serves no purpose whatsoever. It's just something that sort of looks cool. It's up against the window. It lets light in. And it has this little pattern of, of, of design. And when the sunlight comes through it, it sort of makes a little pattern of shadows and sunlight. And that comes from an old, oh, I guess 1960s garden table. That hole in the middle is where you put the umbrella, yeah. right? So, but you wouldn't know this. You'd look at it and say, oh, that looks, that looks something that you could find in Persia or someplace, huh? wherever you know you never know where you could see something you could find it in brooklyn you know you could find it in i don't know in the woods uh, i found this it's very important to have one of these signs up and so because people will you know pay attention right maybe oh this was a uh, in uh, peru a couple of years ago i took a group to, to peru and they and they bought a press and they didn't have it done on time you know just but they finally got it ready and they had music and they had speeches and everything like that and they said we'd like you to anoint the press so they gave me a bottle of Cusco beer and champagne and a ribbon around it and they said you are the godfather of the press right <laughs> so I had to crash it and that was the uh, thing on there so I do lots of silly things uh, one of the silly things I did was I curated ex an exhibition once because um, I was standing around with a bunch of guys at the Southern Graphics Convention and I said, how come women do so much together and guys never do anything except play sports, you know, that's, but men don't really do much together. So let's do an exhibition so, and I, I'm going to call it Men in Aprons. And so it brings in another kind of thinking in a way of guys in a bunch of aprons. And so uh, <laughs> I, I did that. And so I used the, the <laughs> idea of uh, men in aprons. That's me, uh, in case you didn't know. Okay. <laughs> so uh, those of you that are coming to the opening tomorrow, re the reception tomorrow, uh, you basically, uh, sh sh you know, you're going to see the same show. And those of you that are not coming, you'll have an opportunity to see it. But uh, this is going to be part one of something that I'm doing. It's a, black and, a series of black and white works that involve found pieces of metal, found pieces of zinc. Those of you that know about etching, this zinc is one of the common materials that we use for etching, zinc and copper, and sometimes steel. Now we use solar plates too. But with zinc, uh, and finding a pile of zinc that was sitting for 50 years, oxidizing and corroding and becoming cemented together in this pile of, it, with, with salt air doing its number and nature actually creating something on the zinc. I looked at it and I said, wow, they're so beautiful. This zinc is gorgeous. So I looked at the zinc and I, I created images from the zinc place. So, if you can imagine a pile of zinc all piled up like this and with brown paper in between each one and prying them apart like that and seeing, oh, this is opposite that. 
This is a mirror image of that one. This is how the images were originally created, with the com concept of opposites. Not things that go with each other, but things that are opposite each other. And as I was working on them, the concept developed. There was no concept beforehand. It was just pure process. It was pure experimentation of what can I do and how can I make this work. It was no idea other than making a material work. So with that in mind, I, I looked at them and I said, gee, I've got this opposites and I'm going to give them names. And what were opposites? And they, I came up with the concept of Aesop's fables. So the slave, the Greek slave Aesop, would make up these stories and tell little children and other, and they would all have morals, but they were opposite, the grasshopper and the ant, the hare and the tortoise, the ox and the frog. They, they would have these stories like the frog would say to the father, what's that over there? And the papa frog would say to the son, it's an ox, and the frog would say, He's big. He's not so big, the father said. I can make myself big like that. And he blows himself up. He said, see? And the frog said, well, I think that ox is still a lot bigger than you are. He says, well, we'll just watch. And he blows himself up more. And he says, see, how about that? And he says, well, that ox is really a lot bigger than you are. Well, just wait. And he goes, blows himself really way up and he blows himself completely up. So the moral of the story is be happy with what and how you are. Don't try to change yourself. So that's what Aesop said. And it's sort of a, a nice little, he's filled with these nice stories of, of uh, morals and lessons of life and ways about going through life. Not how, but ways. All right. So with that, if you have any questions, I would love to entertain. Some.